guys, welcome to the channel. Today's video, because we're not riding, we're not creating any riding content, but what I thought I'd ask is how everybody else got into bikes. How did you become a motorcycle owner and rider? Me, personally, I grew up on a on my parents' farm, not far away, just up the road from where we're, uh, we're filming now, and uh, from about the age of 12 I had field bikes and it was basically anything was lads could get hands on and it was mostly Honda Cubs I mean Honda Cubs are quite prized these days but uh, oh, we had them and we wrecked them around the field we, we bought uh, Honda C50s, C70s and C90s they were our they were our weapon of choice, if you uh, if you like to say. I mean, what what we normally do is took the took the white fairings off, chop the back end off, and chop the exhaust off at the downpipe, and we used to razz them around the fields, and those engines were just about indestructible. So that's how I got my first taste of uh, of motorcycling. Uh, I had one or two other bikes. I had a, a DT. 175 before I could uh, legally ride on the on the road, so I had that for tazzing around the fields and uh, and a bull taco. I can't remember what it is, something like a bull taco 150. I did actually drop that and break it, and uh, I split the gearbox down myself as a I think a 15 year old, and uh, I couldn't really figure it out how to how to get it back together again. I'd left it uh, all apart on my dad's uh, dad's workshop table and. Uh, I went to school and I got back and uh, my good old dad had uh, figured it all out, put it back together and got the gear selectors to work because I wrenched the gear selector around. So that's how I got into biking and uh, then for when I was 15 we went and with my parents consent went and bought uh, an FS1E, a second hand one and uh, put the picture up now and uh, oh, my first taste of motorcycling. It's only in recent years I've been able to afford to indulge myself. Obviously I've got, got my MT-10 here and uh, there's lots of videos on the channel about that and the, and the bike behind is uh, my wife's bike and uh, she's been riding since 2012 and also if you watch the channel You'll be aware of my uh, XSR currently sitting in the living room where it should be, of course, when it's not being ridden. So hopefully you'll indulge me and I'll go through my bike history, but uh, I'm really interested what everybody else's bike history is. What bike do you regret selling? And I'll tell you which one that is when I get to it, but there is a certain bike. I really regret selling and, and so wish I'd got now. But uh, at the moment, I'm really happy with the bikes I've got. I wouldn't want to change them for anything else at the moment. So hang on in there and we'll cut to the photos and the vids. That is me on my FS1E. God, I love that bike. An amazing feeling getting out on the road as a 16 year old it's just the freedom, the freedom of being able to go where you wanted, when you wanted. And, you know, that being the age of bike, it was before they restricted them to 30. So, fabulous bike. Loved it, loved it. Until I got this. 17, I got my RD250 LC. And God, I love that bike. An amazing, amazing machine for a learner machine which you could put L plates on. Of course, we all wanted the 350 that you can see here at the Newark Classic Bike Show, but that 250 was good for 100 miles an hour. No, no wonder they changed the rules and regs. But uh, absolutely loved that bike, and that's the bike I wished I'd have kept. God, I wish that was still in my garage. But oh well. Guess what came next? Yes, you got it. Chopped in for a car. A beige Ford Escort, I'm afraid. 
Oh dear, and that led to the down years, I'm afraid. Mortgage, kids, whole of the 1990s. That's all I could afford. Use it to get to work on occasionally, but uh, that was it. Until 2004, when I managed to afford my first Suzuki Bandit. Everybody at some stage must have had a Bandit everywhere. But the 600 was great. Loved it so much, I went and bought another one. But this time, the 1200, 1200S. And God, that was a quick bike. Didn't go around corners that well. And kind of uh, dissolved in the winters a bit, but I kept it a few years. This is up at uh, Hard Knock Pass in the Lake District. God, great bike, great bike. Did be proud. Yeah. Not much taste in jackets, I'm afraid, but there you go. By uh, early 2011, I was feeling a little bit more flush, so I was brave and I thought I'd treat myself to the brand new, newly out Ducati Multistrada 1200S. And uh, fabulous, fabulous bike to ride, so much power. That V twin engine was something really special. But oh, God, that bike, that bike you can see me riding down hard knock past. It gave me so much grief in warranty. Went backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards to the dealership. So many electronic things broke on it. It lived up to its reputation, I'm afraid, of being Italian. So uh, turned into a nightmare, actually. So uh, in the end, I just couldn't take it anymore. Had to go. My wife, back in 2012, decided I was having too much fun on my own with a, uh, with a motorbike, so she decided to take her test, and uh, her first bike was this bike, Purple Street Triple. And uh, she absolutely loved it. We went everywhere on it. We went to the Alps and all sorts of places. Fabulous, fabulous bike. She really learned to craft on that bike. And uh, as you can see in the clip coming up, she occasionally let me... Uh, have a ride of it and uh, I'll let you have a quick look of me taking it up the uh, the Isle of Man TT course. I forget what year it was, I think probably 2014 or something like that. But uh, keep a look out at the end. I managed to, <laughs> managed to pass the police car doing about 90 and do it on, on, on solid white lines. Only in the uh, only in the Isle of Man. Eh? after 18 months with the uh, Ducati I just couldn't take any more of the breakdowns the amount of time it was sitting at the uh, uh, the Coventry dealer I uh, I just partexted it in at the Triumph dealer and got myself a Triumph Speed Triple 1050 and uh, what a great bike actually as you can see from my leg position here it was a bit tight for me a big lad and uh, it was always a bit uncomfortable, but I loved the way it went. And it handled like nothing else. Went around the corner, but it was a category. Oh, it really is well. Oh, amazing, amazing bike. Not got many rider aids, which also appealed to me after all the problems I've had with the Ducati. There's always something the electronic suspension braking. Just couldn't put up with it, and this was more of a back to basics bike, you know, just an engine and two wheels basically, and uh, 
I loved, I loved every moment of the flight, but what I didn't love was the comfort and um, this Scottish tour. We did a whole day, I think we did something like about 300 miles, and um, we got to the hotel, and I just basically couldn't walk and get up the stairs from the hotel after being cramped on the bike for so long. And unfortunately, the speed trip had to go just for comfort. In 2013, I thought, well, I quite fancy giving a go at a bit of off-roading. I know I'm a bit of an old fella, but uh, I just thought, well, it's something to do during the winter when the uh, the Triumph was in the garage and didn't, didn't want to get salt on it. So uh, I saw this WR advertised and it looked pretty good. And uh, it hadn't hardly been used. You know, it was a few years old and it's got the supermoto wheels with it as well. So I just thought, I'll give it a go. And uh, this is around the front house. I'm gonna go down his, uh, having to go down his steps, but uh, yeah, um, it took a while to get used to it. I've done obviously some off-roading around the farm, but not, not proper off-roading, and not for, for years and years and years. Uh, well, bear in mind, I'm in my late uh, late forties here, early fifties, so uh, it was hard work, really hard work, especially for, for a guy that's carrying a bit of weight. So uh, you know, I found it really tough going really tough going and this is this is in the middle of Wales and, and uh, God I did a, an off-road weekend and oh, it about killed me it really did but uh, really really fun don't get me wrong really fun I mean look at that for a view absolutely superb really really enjoyed it we were a good bunch of lads but uh, I was by far and away far and away the worst one and uh, oh dear about what going to happen. Oops. Yes, so unfortunately that proved the end of my off-roading career. 2014, I'll go for something that's way more comfortable for my legs, way more stretched out, taller bike, I go for the Tiger 800 XC, and XC means it was uh, more oriented for the uh, for the off road, and uh, that was a mistake really, because 99% of my riding was on road, like uh, like here. I think this is uh, going down some Bernard's Pass in the uh, French Alps, and. Uh, it really affected the road handling and the cornering. I never got to grips with the uh, corner. I didn't like the way it cornered. So uh, it really, uh, really wasn't the bike for me. And uh, I'd almost got instant regret as soon as I'd uh, done a long trip on it. The seat wasn't comfortable. I did try it off road. Didn't enjoy that either because it was a really heavy bike. This is about the first week I had it and it had uh, gone down this lane in front of me. Scare the living daylights out of me. So that was the most quickly sold bike, and that went to buy the Kawasaki Versus Versus Thousand GT. Now this was a really class bike, really good bike, really meant for two up touring. It was a, it was a quite a big bike, and uh, I toured Spain on it, did Scotland on it. Really, really class bike. I've got no complaints really, other than it's maybe, maybe a little bit boring to ride, and uh, I think it's got something like 100, 120 horsepower. So it was capable, but it wouldn't quite keep up with the uh, 1200 uh, Waterpool 1200 GS at the time. So uh, uh, I mean, I loved it, and I, and, and I kept the bike for for quite some time, but. Uh, it still wasn't for me, so uh, in the end, I decided to go for something a little bit more exciting. In the meantime, 2016, Carol decides to change her purple street triple for a red one. Slightly different design with the exhaust down below rather than uh, up under the seat, but the main thing for Carol to got ABS brakes, which is which is probably the only real rider aid I, I, I think is a, is a must have. 
especially on a more experienced, inexperienced rider. Uh, this is her taking it up the coldest run in the French Alps. So here yeah, we'll maybe the year later. But uh, oh, it's a fabulous run as well. She's, she's still going. It is a really, really rapid little machine. So much fun to, to ride, but if you imagine I was cramped in speed trouble, the street trouble is even more cramped. It's a little bike, really. That's what I seem to carry. But uh, it doesn't really suit me. I mean, I enjoy riding it, but it's uh, yeah, it is a great bike. It's been super reliable, and uh, that's why she's still got it for all these years. Well, for sheer excitement, you can't beat an MT10. What a fabulous, fabulous bike. That's why I've still got it. It's been the bike I've hung on to the longest. Super machine, it does everything. I mean, apart from it drinks, it drinks fuel really badly. You know, it's it's got a massive thirst, but so much fun, so versatile. I can get luggage on it. It can also be super, super crazy, fast when you want it to be. Um, it, it does everything, does it well. It's super reliable. It's not got it's not got loads of uh, electronic rider aids on it. It is just a fabulous, fabulous, exciting machine. I mean, look at it here. This is in the Picos. No, oh, I just so loved riding this bike along here. And I don't think I ever want to sell it. It's got me that, that much. I, I love this bike. Absolutely love it. So I should just keep putting miles on it and fingers crossed. It'll keep being reliable. Yamaha reliability for you. And that was another thing that swung that, you know, I thought if I want another bike, one that I'll pose around on maybe a bit more, I'll get an XSR and I'll get it done out like I want to get it done out by uh, a company called Velocity Moto, which takes me back to the bike I regret selling, which was the LC. And that's why I had this bike done. And um, it just reminds me so much of my LC. I love that bike and uh, regret selling it. So uh, I thought I can get a bike that'll be reliable. Well, guys, you've got amazing stamina. Made it to the end of the video. But uh, thanks for watching. And hope you'll leave your comments down below on what your first bike was. And maybe the bike you regret selling. But... Uh, Better times are going to come. We'll all be back on the road soon. Fingers crossed. Keep safe, everyone. And catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.